Welcome back to the Tapes Archive Podcast, where we release interviews that have never been heard before. In this episode, we have Little Feet guitarist Paul Barrere. At the time of this interview in 1992, Barrere was 44 years old and was promoting Little Feet's upcoming concert at Deer Creek Music Center. In the interview, Barrere talks about his fond memories of Little Feet founder Lowell George, how well the band is playing, and what bugs him about the music biz. This week's interview is hosted by Mark Allen. Thanks for tuning in, and now it's time to open the vault. Shake Me Up is uh, the last thing we heard from you, right? I mean, yeah. Is there something new coming? Well, we're going to, after we finish touring, uh, we're going to start the writing process, and uh, hopefully we'll get down to starting to record some stuff before the end of the year. And we'll probably have another record done by, I would imagine, next summer. Once we get started, we tend to get them done pretty reasonable. Yeah, it seemed to be putting, uh, since the group got back together, you'd been putting out one touring, putting out another touring and like that. Did you kind of take some time where you decided not to go into the studio? We put out Shake Me Up last September, right. so we kind of missed out on a summer tour for it. And the record has obviously run its course, but we wanted to do a, a nice summer tour this year, and so it, uh, the opportunity arose to do this co-headline thing with George Thorogood, and it's been working out really well. So it's uh, we're still, you know, kind of promoting uh, Shake Me Up, but uh, we're basically out here to have fun and to play and let people know that we're still around. And we've actually cut back on the schedule. From I mean, when we first put the band back together, we toured ten months out of that that first year when we released Let It Roll, and and then. Uh, we went right in and, and did uh, representing the Mambo, and, and we toured somewhere between eight and a half, nine months for that one. And it was like, oh, okay, we've reestablished the fact that we're back. Let's, let's reacquaint ourselves with our families. You know, my wife and I just had our second child five months ago, and she was very happy that I was home for, the, <laughs> for, for that and was there to change diapers because we have a three-year-old as well to, for uh, the first four months you know, before we started touring again. It's been good. It's, everybody's actually got, well, at least the writers in the band have, have started some songs and stuff so that when we do finally get off this road trip, uh, we won't be starting from scratch. There's there's uh, stuff to work on. And will we hear anything new uh, when you're here? Well, we've worked up some new things for Little Feet, but they're not new songs. There's some, there's some old blues classics that we, you know, Little Feet got since when I first remembered them when they were a quartet. I mean, they used to cover Howlin' Wolf tunes like 44 Blues and How Many More Years and things like that. And, and it's something that we had kind of gotten away from. And uh, and Billy came up with the idea of doing a bit of the old Little Walter classic, Mellow Down Easy, which was on the first Paul Butterfield Blues Band record. So we kind of cover a little bit of that. And uh, we came up with, when we were doing these all acoustic shows, which we tend to do now, and then we'll go out for a weekend and go into a club in a town and, and play nothing but acoustic feet music, which is great. But I came up with this little medley of a Muddy Waters tune, uh, Can't Be Satisfied, that segues into a Robert Johnson tune, Hot Tamales in the Red Hot. So will, you think we'll hear those? Uh, oh, you will hear those. Oh, yeah. great. Okay. We're going to play those. And now, uh, Shake Me Up, I, I thought was the best, although although representing the Mambo, the song, is my favorite song that you've done for years. Um, Shake Me Up uh, sounds like the best uh, record that you've put together since the band reformed. But what do you think? Well, personally, I thought the same thing. I thought, you know, I think all three albums are gems. You know, a Letter Roll was probably the safest mainstream kind of rock and roll record of them all. Representing the Mambo, I'm glad that you like that record. It's like, for some reason, that seemed to go right over a lot of people's heads. They tended to forget that Little Feet was that weird. <laughs> you know? It was like, all they wanted to hear from Little Feet was the, the Let It Rolls and the Hate to Lose Your Lovin's, you know, the, the Dixie Chicken clones or whatever. Right. You know, they, they forgot all about the, you know, the days at the dog races and the, you know, the... <laughs> stranger side of Little Feet, and I thought representing the Mambo was just perfect, you know, I mean, we had that song on there, we had the Ingenue, we had Silver Screen, I mean, they were all very, we'll never be accused of being alternative rock, you know? <laughs> <laughs> for a while there, we were, you know, being called jazz rockers or something, I think it just, it just shows the musicianship of the band, I mean, and also, you got a song like uh, Those Feet Will Steer You Wrong, which is right out of the Willen type of genre, only except it's kind of poking fun at yourself, which is great. And then we did this album, which is a combination of both, really. I mean, you have Spider's Blues, which is, I love that song, and I, li I loved Clowning, too, which I thought was really great. The choir effects, you know, Bonnie Bramley. 
but just wailing on it. <laughs> it was great. And then uh, Shake Me Up, which is the typical, atypical, little feet, really hard rocking kind of shuffle. And yet the album went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> it was like, wait a minute, stop the presses, what's going on here? Something's wrong with this picture. Little feet records tend to sell over the long period. I mean, it took 12 years for uh, Feet Don't Fail Me Now to go gold. <laughs> subsidiary, who actually isn't a subsidiary, but they're distributed by another company, Polygrams. 
the and the rack jobbers and I mean it's like the businesses. The business has changed, so <laughs> And and that for the better as far as I can see. Although the little feet, I mean I think it's changed for the better. The last time you were here was the best I'd ever seen you and I've seen you about ten times over really? the, since uh, seventy seven. So. Right, right. Yeah. Um, you know, the thing about the band now is it's consistency. It's uh, you know, whether it's just the fact that we've matured or we're more serious about our instruments and our music, I'm not really sure exactly what the defining line was, but we seem to be a much more consistent band night after night, and it's just, it's really just a joy to play with these guys. Yeah, uh, and that's true, because there were nights where you'd come out with Lowell, and you just never knew how participatory he would be, and uh, right. it was... Uh, so it is kind of cool to see you now and, and know you're gonna gonna get a great show as opposed to wondering if you're gonna get a great yeah, show. Right. <laughs> wondering, wondering if or who was gonna sing what or yeah. how many songs they would do. Boy, those days are strange. It's like every now and then I'll read in the paper where what was it? Hank Williams Jr. went out and played 16 minutes, you know, in St. Louis or something like that. Right. Good night. You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> Do you get a deja vu feeling? Like, I, I do. It's like, you know, it's like, I'm so glad those days are over for us. <laughs> but you have to have some fond memories of that. I mean, I can't... Oh, yeah. You know. Oh, absolutely. We have tapes, and there's actually a couple of videotapes of some shows that we did from back then, and that are just phenomenal. We played some really good music. You know, I tend to forget how well we used to play, mm -hmm. because there was that eight-year layoff between bands, and there's some stuff that is just phenomenal. We have some jam tapes from our rehearsal hall with uh, people like John Clemmer came in and played some sax one day, and Robin Ford, and just things where we just got together and jammed that are like, whoa, mm -hmm. hey, that's pretty neat. It's amazing to think that it's been in existence like 22 years, 23 years. Do you have any theories on why Little Feet has never become like a major commercial act? I think because we're so diverse. Probably is the main reason. If we were just a southern boogie band or just a, a I don't know a country funk band or what you know whatever brand of music that we're playing at the time if we were just that then you know a label can go oh good okay we can put these guys in this pigeonhole here and we'll promote them as such and we'll we'll talk to them about their image which they have none and, you know, <laughs> we'll get them nice clothes and uh, we'll do the hair up those that got the hair mm -hmm. you know it's like we're a band that just, you know, likes to play music, and it's, that's not really what marketing's all about. Yeah, that isn't even really what music is about anymore, it seems. It's like, you don't really necessarily... Well, it is what music's player. about, but it's not what the music business is about. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's like, you don't even have to be a player anymore, you know, you can just no, be a producer or something. And, uh, I think with the whole realm of, of video and video performance art, the thing that bugs me most about the business is that you'll have the major people in all those different genres and then you'll have the clones and some of the clones are making as much as the major people it's like if you put blindfolds on people and played the music and said okay can you tell me that band a b c or d i'm sure a lot of people would fail anything else you want me to tell people about uh, you the band anything else god i hope you don't tell them all this crap <laughs> i spurred it off here today <laughs> just the highlights <laughs> Wonderful, I can't wait to see what this sounds like. <laughs> no, just tell them to come out. We will definitely have a good time. The thing about the band and this tour is that we're not really out promoting anything. We're just out playing and we're having a good time. It's evident in the smiles that are on our faces that translate to the smiles that are on the audience's faces. We're here to have a ball. One other question, kind of a goofy question. Sure. Um, I'm asking everybody I interview if they have a favorite lyric about love, either your own or somebody else's. I talked to Tori Amos yesterday, and she picked Dixie Chick, and she thought that was her favorite love song. Really? Yeah. So. Oh, man, I didn't think it ever <laughs> mentioned love. but um, It does in a weird way. <laughs> <laughs> God, you know, the cynical part of me wants to say love stinks, but yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. You know, there's, the problem with that is there's too many sappy songs about love. There's, you know, there's some good love songs, too, though. And the way I'm feeling now, having been gone from home after, for about three weeks, I think missing you would probably yeah. do it. Yeah, okay. All right, well, I'm looking forward to seeing you. And good. You, you know. take care. I'm sorry right. I bent your ears so long. No, that's all right. It's been great. <laughs> thanks. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks for listening to the Tapes Archive podcast. Please remember, you can always find more information about the show and the individual episodes at our website, thetapesarchive.com. 
Until next time, the vault is closed.